Hello and welcome to irishracing.com for another edition of Emma's Eyecatchers in partnership with Boyle Sports. I suppose plenty to dissect this week. We went through all the big races and through the handicaps on our Monday show, but I'm going to pick out some of probably my favourite performances and some eye-catching ones um, who maybe didn't win over the weekend as well. I think, look, just kind of a quick mention, I think my, my favourite performance over the weekend was definitely Galloping Deschamps. I suppose he's a horse who I find extremely likeable because... He's kind of overcome that adversity. He's been beaten and he's come back again and again, just proven his class. I think he's just a generational kind of talent. He's a, probably as good a Gold Cup horse as I've seen. And yeah, odds on for the Gold Cup now looks well justified. And I think you can't really fault the form of the race either. Fast or slow, ran his race, jumped supremely, gave him a challenge, but Gallup and Deschamps was pulling clear in the end. So yeah, he looks well justified to be a short price for the Gold Cup and it's going to take a fairly special performance to beat him come Cheltenham time I'd say another one who I thought was very impressive in winning look Emmett's bumper horse was brilliant unfortunately ruled out for the season with injury which is a massive pity but Willie had a brilliant mare who won the bumper on Sunday on Jolie Town and Fleur au facile um I think what was what was most eye catching about her was just the, how hard she pulled throughout the race even in the parade ring beforehand she was giving her handlers a hard time she, like, to keep going to the line, she would gallop and eat up ground coming towards the winning post. And, yeah, there's some decent mum- ba- mares in that bumper. Aurora Vega was well fancied for Willie. Of course, I would have Vega as well. So she showed, she just has a massive engine, I'd say, this mare. And she'd probably be one to keep it on your side down the line as well. A few maybe eye-catching losers then as well. I think there's definitely two in that um, juvenile hurdle on the Saturday, the grade one race. First off, Majbra was a horse I've kind of spoken about in the past. We really gave him in our interview for the stable tour back in October as a dark, dark horse to follow. First out for Willie in in a grade one hurdle, which you know, kind of spoke about his ability, but just seeing him in the ring beforehand, big, massive, imposing type of chasing horse. I'd say next year probably could be his year, something like an arc and will be right up his alley. Um, horse with plenty of talent, I'd say. Had to buck out in front. He looked a little bit keen, but... You know, got swallowed up a small bit in the finish, but kept galloping to the line. And yeah, it could be maybe a, an each way, an each way kind of proposition for the triumph hurdle. But next year looks definitely like his year. But in that race, I think probably one of the most eye-catching horses over the weekend, Ethical Diamond. Another one kind of being talked up by Willie earlier on in the year as a big fancy for the triumph hurdle. Obviously, was a good horse on the flat, won a maiden there in Limerick and switched hands, I'd say, for a pretty penny. But yeah, it looks like a horse, massive ability. At first day, he kind of blew out and Leopardstown pulled way too hard. Dropped out um, this time out the back by Michael O'Sullivan and settled well and just started eating up eating up ground towards the finish. A horse probably with any amount of ability if he can just kind of, he would need to settle a lot better now if he was going to land a big race. Um, he, and he will need another race to get into the Boodles, Boodles in Cheltenham, which probably would be his best chance of winning at the festival. Five week, about five weeks to go might be a little tight on time but be keeping an eye out maybe if he gets an entry put him into the tracker uh, yeah it could, could be one for that Boodles hurdle um, but he would need to settle better on a handicap is, is what you'd have to say about him and just kind of looking towards anti-post market now is how I normally finish up the show kind of a tough one I suppose I was out in Shag Hannon's yard this morning though and kind of the more I think about it like Ewick has to be still getting underestimated for the Gold Cup. I know I talked about Gallup and Deschamps, and I do think he's going to be really, really hard to beat. He'd have to underperform, I think, to be beaten. But it's not too often you get a King George winner coming up to a Gold Cup at 14 to 1. He's 14 to 1 with Boyle Sports, which looks like a, a big price at the moment. Anyway, he was looks in massive form this morning. They feel confident of a big run. And he is the fresh horse coming to Shetland. Obviously, he got that break from Christmas to March. Um, an easy horse, very uncomplicated. Was running a big race last year as well before coming down. I think if some of them start to falter in the finish, you could definitely run on, like we saw in the King George, run into a place. So fourteen to one each way. You never know what happens in a Gold Cup, and I think he'll be there with a fighting chance in the finish. So I wouldn't mind being on him. I'm going to wrap it up there anyway. I'll be back on Friday with Egg Quigley to preview all the big big weekends action. If you're going to have a bet, make sure to gamble responsibly and like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content.